Howdy folks, Merry Christmas, today's the day, or I don't know if you're in certain countries, yesterday was the day, or if you're in Russia, the 9th of January is the day. Apparently they still celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December, but in the Julian calendar that's the 9th of January. I, I don't know, it all gets very complicated, just bugger it. <laughs> I hope you're having a nice day, regardless of whether or not it's Christmas where you are or not. Well anyway, on Sunday, two days ago, I got together with Flamu, the world's most toxic World of Warships community contributor, which unfortunately means that I am now guilty by association, and I'm now the second most toxic World of Warships community contributor. It was kind of weird actually. You can't really do good cop, bad cop when there's only me and Flamu to choose from, so... <laughs> Who's going to be the good cop? <laughs> uh, so we just kind of decided that we're going to be bad cop and worse cop and let the audience decide which was which. We had a lot of fun, we gave away a ton of stuff for Christmas, and with the new Christmas snowflake thing going in World of Warships, we earned a whole bunch of steel and coal to spend in the arsenal. The match that you're watching right now occurred towards the end of my participation in the live stream. Actually, it just occurs to me I should probably put a work in progress overlay up since we are in a work in progress premium tier 10 Japanese battlecruiser. That's Flamu in the background over there in the other Azuma. Yeah, I know it says Solanine and not Flamu, but what can I say? He's so incredibly toxic, he has to have multiple different accounts under multiple different names in order to hide his identity. Anyway, the Azuma. This is actually the very first time I've played this ship. It's a premium tier 10 Japanese battlecruiser, and opinion among the community contributors is very much divided on this ship. It is very much a work in progress, by the way. All stats are subject to change. Certain community contributors just don't really see the point, or they just don't like it, it doesn't suit their playstyle. Flamu is one of the community contributors who absolutely adores this ship and loves playing it. Now there are a couple of things that you have to remember here. First and foremost, this is the very first time I've played this ship. I mean, I'm a bit of a noob in World of Warships in general, but I'm a noob when it comes to sailing the Azuma in particular. And remember, Flamu's played this ship a lot, and he absolutely adores it. So, at this point, I'm actually talking to Flamu on the stream over Discord and asking him, so how does this ship work? What am I supposed to do? And he's talking through the pros and cons and giving me advice. Got a quick high explosive salvo off there against the Henri. 310mm guns, by the way. Nine of them. So, with my first shots fired from the guns on this thing, I'm thinking, well, that wasn't very good. I mean, it only did 1600 damage, although it did set a fire on the Henri over there. Follow it up with a second salvo. 15 second reload on these 310mm guns, by the way, and that's really the strength of this ship. Its armour isn't very good, the Citadel is kind of exposed. The turning circle is huge, but it has 9 310mm guns. And you can get a 15 second reload. Obviously, once Adrenaline Rush kicks in, once you've started to take some damage, you can cut that reload down even further. So I'm listening to Flamu because he is the sensei here, he's the one with the experience of playing this ship, and he's basically telling me to treat it as a very large and not very tanky Zhao. I'm trying to get a salvo out from concealment here. I was actually very surprised that I did get spotted there when I fired. I was assuming that the island over there on the right was going to block the Henri's view of me, but nope, it was not to be. Start manoeuvring because I am presenting broadside to a whole bunch of ships over there, all of which are in range. But it's not the HIV that gets to take the shot. No, it's Gianni Alsacci over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, that could have been a lot worse. I didn't take a Citadel, but I did take a large chunk of armor-piercing penetrating damage. Avoided the return shot. Managed to get a reasonable amount of high explosive damage on the Alsacci, as well as setting the fire. What? What do you mean that's not how you pronounce it? Of course it is. That's how you pronounce Italian names. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and in one go he managed to offend all of the Italians and all of the Frenchmen watching at the same time. Anyway, I figured I'd switch the armour piercing and give it a go. Now that the uh, Alsace over there is burning nicely, and I unload some armour piercing from the front two 310mm turrets. And I am rewarded with a reasonably large number. 
Now, I'm pretty sure that that was as a result of plunging fire through the deck of um, that Italian battleship. <laughs> all right, all right, fine, fair enough. I'll stop. Okay, God, you lot are no fun. The reason I say I'm pretty sure that was plunging fire, as I attempt to manoeuvre to avoid getting set on fire and shredded by that Zhao, and get away with it, was because, well, it's not going to be too long before you see what happens when I unload some of this 310mm armour piercing into the broadside of a cruiser at point-blank range. You see, the AP shells on this ship are a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah, I wasn't expecting those to hit the Zhao. It wasn't quite a blind shot, but I couldn't actually see the Zhao because he was behind the island, even though he was spotted, so I had no waterline indicator to aim for. But anyway, Flamu has been over this side of the map the entire game, constantly getting cock-blocked by the enemy, I think it's a Fletcher, destroyer, lurking around in the general vicinity of that smokescreen. In fact, ooh, look, there he is. The Yu Yang has been yelling for assistance, so both Flamu and myself are over here to attempt to help him out. We're not doing too well here, although we've only lost one ship so far, and we have just managed to pull a kill back, but the enemy team have got two of the caps, and they're in the process of decapping the one and only cap that we do actually hold, so the enemy team are quite far ahead on point. And until we start sinking stuff, or flip some of the caps that they hold, or chase that Fletcher out of the one cap that we do hold, we're not going to get any more points coming in. So you can see the Fletcher's smokescreen. Right there on the other side of the island. Now, I don't have Hydro. I could have Hydro, but you have to choose between Hydro or Defensive AA. And where Hydro is useful all the time, and Defensive AA is only really useful situationally. When you need Defensive AA, you really need it. You can get away without really having Hydro by just anticipating where you're expecting the destroyers and cruisers and their four torpedoes to be coming from. Of course, the defensive AA is a complete waste of time in this particular map, and Hydro would have been very, very useful indeed. There's the Alsace again. High explosive loaded, immediately switched to armor piercing, and I get away without being spotted because I have island concealment, although I immediately get spotted right after, and I thought initially that it was the Fletcher that was spotting me. And yet, at the same time, I just collected a spotted ribbon, which means I've just spotted a ship. And I should have realised, because first of all, what the hell is the Yu Yang launching its torpedoes in that direction for? And oh shit. Okay. I could have been in a lot of trouble there if that Megami had been firing on the piercing. I was presenting a flat broadside to him. But he wasn't. And I did not expect the Megami to do this. Because I have armor piercing loaded, and he's showing me a flat broadside. So I was expecting that to be a massive paddling, and instead it was completely underwhelming. There's only one shot hit, and it overpenetrated. So that was a bit of a blow to morale. But the Megami then goes and basically beaches himself. <laughs> and my follow-up armor-piercing salvo? All bounces. 310mm armor-piercing at basically point-blank range into one of the most notoriously badly armoured cruisers for its tier in the game but he was slightly angled, and all of those shots bounced. Those would probably also have bounced as well if he hadn't died while the shots were in the air. So what the hell's going on with this extremely large calibre for a cruiser armour-piercing ammunition? Shots out at our Italian friend again, and this time I not only knock out one of his turrets, but also do a couple of thousand armour-piercing damage. The over-penetration there was probably through a superstructure, but those are solid armor-piercing penetrations. They're not doing a huge amount of damage, so I don't know, maybe I'm just penetrating his torpedo bulge. Maybe one of those shots penetrated his deck armor. And yes, I know I was presenting a broadside to a battleship, and that's very, very dangerous in this ship, but I was about to get into cover behind this island, so it was worth the risk. Still haven't quite figured this AP out. But don't worry, we're going to. The high explosive, by the way, is generally pretty good all the time. But you can do monstrous amounts of damage with this 310mm armour piercing when you get the right shots. Now the overall tactical situation has improved. We're not out of the woods yet, we are still behind on points, but we got more points coming in because now we control two of the caps and we're one kill ahead. And if I can ninja the kill on Gianni Alsace over there, we will be two kills ahead. Shots out, still armour piercing, but 
well, I only have to hit him with one. And kill secured, 77 damage. <laughs> and now for the first time, we are actually ahead. So hurrah, two caps, we're ahead on points and we're ahead on kills. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it's a patch weekend. Anything can and probably will happen. Observe the Iowa reversing from the very angry looking smoke screen up ahead while on fire. What do we know about smoke screens, boys and girls? Yes, they tend to launch torpedoes. Lots and lots and lots and lots of torpedoes. And your only real counter to a torpedo swarm like that is speed and maneuverability, neither of which you have if you're going backwards. So the enemy team are now once again ahead on points, but it's okay. We still have the kill advantage and we still have more points coming in than they do. Yeah. I'm spotted. I know that I don't have to worry about any torpedoes because anything in that smoke screen has just basically blown its load already. But that's a lot of battleships and I'm in an Azuma. You can't bow tank in this thing the way you can in a Moskva or a Stalingrad. It doesn't have the bow armor. 16 inch armor piercing shells will go right through it. So I was expecting to be on the receiving end of a paddling of epic proportions from this North Carolina, but I really shouldn't have worried because he's firing high explosive and missing. <laughs> and he has the survivability expert skill. That's right. A hit point perk battleship firing high explosives. Oh yes, the memes are real. I don't really think I have too much to worry about from an HP perk high explosive spamming battleship, even if I am in a very squishy cruiser. That Shimakaze, on the other hand, has been nothing but a persistent thorn in our team's sides. I managed to squeeze the shots off while I still had the target lock, and I do score a number of hits, set two fires, incapacitated something, but he'd been saving his damage control. When I fired at him, his engine was disabled, although he was still making way because he has the last stand perk, but he's definitely just used his damage control because the fires aren't ticking. I know I did just ground myself there. I did it on purpose. No, no, really. <laughs> I know you're all like, yeah, really, Jingles. No, that was a tactical beaching. I did not just pull a notza. I didn't want to go steaming around the corner at full speed broadside on in front of a grosser cur first. I thought, if I'm going to have to take my chances with any of these battleships, and I'm going to have to take my chances with at least one of these battleships, I want it to be the high explosive spamming hit point perk North Carolina. Because I probably stand a better chance with him than I do with any of the others. And there are a lot of other enemy battleships. We have just lost another two ships. There are only five of us left against the seven enemies most of which are battleships, and this ship does not react very well at all to being shot at by battleships. And I thought I was safe from the Grosser Kerfest here. I did, after all, deliberately beach here in order to avoid getting shot at by his big-ass guns, but I am spotted by catapult-launched aircraft, and while the Grosser Kerfest's main battery guns can't hit me, his secondaries definitely can. And let me tell you, getting shot at by a Grosser Kerfest's secondaries is not fun. So this was a serious blow to morale. I need to get in closer to the island to get under the firing arcs of these 128 and 150 millimeter secondaries and take the fight to that North Carolina. All the time I'm sitting here in partial cover, not shooting at anything, the team is continuing to lose. And the only advantage that we have, or two caps, is being threatened by somebody flipping control of Bravo from us. So full speed ahead and damn the North Carolinas. I still have armor piercing loaded here, by the way. This is a mistake. It may be very large caliber cruiser armor piercing, but it's not large enough to knock out the turrets of a North Carolina, even at point blank range like this. That's what I was trying to do here, and I really should have taken the hint after the first series of shatters on his turret faces, but well, it takes me a while to learn the lesson, but I do eventually switch to high explosive. Now, if at any point this North Carolina had loaded armor piercing, I would have been dead. But I was reasonably confident that he was never going to do so. I mean, he's taken the hit point perk and he's been firing high explosive at everything so far. Plus, we also have the fact that a Japanese cruiser is bearing down at him and he's taking no torpedo evasion moves whatsoever. Yes, okay, the Azuma doesn't have torpedoes, but he doesn't know that. All other Japanese cruisers do. So I was reasonably confident of winning this engagement. I'm just going to let him continue to burn. He's dead. Now I'm going to use the damage control. 
extinguish the two fires. I'm taking flanking fire from the Zhao, but I'll keep moving forward. I've got the island now shielding me from him. I've got Alsachi number two up ahead of me, and a Grosser Kerfurst over to my right. But the Grosser Kerfurst is at the moment more concerned with our Shimakaze. So I've got this guy all to myself. And I'm back on the armor piercing because he's given me a flat broadside. The range is good, and I'm never going to overpenetrate a battleship the way I might a cruiser. And oof, yes, that was a lot of damage. And suddenly his health advantage isn't looking quite so, well, healthy. Now he is firing armor piercing back at me, and I'm probably going to take a fair amount of damage from that because I just can't tank it the way you can in a Stalingrad or a Moskva. He's angled away, so my next armor piercing salvo goes into the rear of the ship where the angling isn't quite as pronounced. And now I'm switching to the high explosive. I managed to set a fire with the secondaries. Some torpedoes behind me. Well, okay, they're no threat. He's going to get a fire again with the rear turret, but it's only the one turret. Now I'm not going at him bows in, and that's why. A little bit of an angle. Not enough for him to be able to penetrate my belt, but enough for him to make him think maybe he can penetrate my belt. If I was chasing at him flat bows in, the way you would in a Stalingrad or a Moskva, he would be able to penetrate my bows and potentially sit it on me from the front. Which is why I'm giving him just enough of an angle for him to make him think maybe I can get the Citadel. And he's losing this fight, and this of course is now why he's swinging the ship around to get the rest of his turrets firing. And so now I start to nose in again. Switch to armor piercing now that he's given me a broadside. Continue the turn, I don't want to be pointing straight at him when he fires those guns, otherwise these armor piercing shells could have done a lot more damage. He obviously knows what happens if he gives me a broadside, so he's turning. And that saves him from immediate destruction, but I've set so many fires with the high explosive shells and the secondaries that it only delayed the inevitable by a couple of seconds. So there's kill number three. The Grosser Kerr first over there. Looks like he's finally going to lose the fight against the Shimakaze, with a little assistance from Flamu's 310mm high explosive. And I'm capping Charlie as well, by the way. Yes, it is entirely possible to do more than one thing at the same time in World of Warships. There's the enemy Shimakaze with uh, the friendly Richie Lulu in hot pursuit. Poor old Flamu, the veteran Azuma player, still hasn't managed to get his name on the scoreboard. <laughs> As I took great pains to point out to him at the time, of course. Flamu, I've heard you're quite good at this game. <laughs> I heard you've played this ship a lot. Would you mind killing something, please? I'm starting to get back pain from carrying you so hard. I mean, you know, okay, I have to admit, moments like this don't come along very often, which is exactly why, when they do, you have to milk them for all they're worth. And I've just capped Charlie. <laughs> Another Shimakaze's back there somewhere. And the reason why I'm just firing the guns at nothing is because it extends my visibility, so it, it gives me an idea of where... Oh, look, Flamu's managed to sink something! <laughs> well, about damn time. He's managed to sink the Yu Yang. Cheers, Flamu. Thanks for turning up. Couldn't have done this without you. Um, <laughs> but yes, just randomly firing my guns off like this. Um, it extends the visibility of the ship, and that will help to tell me where exactly the Shimakaze is, based on whether or not I get spotted when I fire the guns or not. At the moment, wherever he is, he does not have a clear line of sight between myself and him. And that helps tell me exactly where he might be but he's not interested in coming out to fight. <laughs> and we're about to hit a thousand points anyway. And so that was my first ever game in the upcoming Japanese Tier 10 battlecruiser, the Azuma. How can you get your hands on this ship? No idea. It's still work in progress. It may be purchasable for free XP. It may be a reward ship. You might be able to buy it in the arsenal with steel. I really have no idea. In fact, at this point in time, the only thing that I 100% unquestionably know about the Azuma is that I'm better in it than Flamu. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, numbers don't lie. It must be true. What's that? Even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day. You think this was a fluke, do you? Okay, challenge accepted. How do you like them apples? <laughs> or how about these apples? But wait, there's more. How, in fact, do you like the taste of these apples? <laughs> okay, this one was clearly photoshopped. <laughs> we won't talk about that one. Well, that one was clearly a statistical anomaly. We will just pretend that one never happened. 
Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And from me and Rita and Boo and the cats, I hope you're all having a great Christmas and are looking forward to a very safe and prosperous new year. Until then, take care and I'll catch you next time.